Okay, so thinking about that's our, our sequence that geomorphically at least, we want our estuary to track through those stages um, to stay open. But sometimes, as we know, that doesn't happen. So openings can be unsuccessful in the sense that we dig it out and then it shuts off straight away, or it can kind of just have a slow trickle out um, that shuts off within a few days later and doesn't really do much. So we were going around um, during some field work in Victoria, trying to figure out why some of the reasons for this were, and this is something I hope might be um, useful to talk about um, in terms of thinking when to implement them. So openings can be unsuccessful for a few reasons. Um, the first is when we have really high waves offshore, and they just bring in so much sediment that it, it infills the channel straight away. The second is when we open estuaries and they don't have enough hydraulic head or, or energy gradient behind them to get fast flow in the channel. That means that the estuary can't incise um, into the beach and it won't keep transporting sand offshore. So that's where we need to get it in that conceptual model to cross um, past that first stage and keep going. And then the last um, one, which is actually most common, um, is when you get a combination of big waves and insufficient energy. So what we can see in this picture here um, is an opening at Curtis Inlet back in 2019. So it was excavated and then um, shut off within a couple of hours. And so the reasons for that is we had um, about four and a half meter waves offshore. So it was an emergency opening, this one. Um, and then we didn't have enough um, or fast enough flow to keep incising and transporting sediment offshore. So that's one of the ones that we've been trying to learn from. Just an example here of an estuary that closed just due to big waves. Um, so this is the Air River, um, and this was again an emergency opening. Waves are about five meters, four meters or so, so getting pretty big. But this site here was really perched, so you can see the lagoons quite close to the ocean here. Um, the head was really high, so it should have opened as just the big waves overwhelmed the sediment transport and shut it off. So for scale here, you can see us um, out in the field are trying to survey this opening. So this situation here, it was opened at 9 a.m. Within a couple of hours, it had pretty much shut off. Then the next day, it had completely infilled um, the former channel here. And then um, the day after, it had raised the beach elevation um, by about a metre. So waves, they're really powerful in, in filling it up. An example of a time when um, an opening was unsuccessful because it couldn't uh, transport enough sediment offshore was this one at the Jellybrand River, um, also in, in 2019. So this uh, estuary was opened when the beach was um, about 100 metres long. And the head difference between the lagoon and the sea was really low. So in terms of the energy gradient, um, it just didn't have enough slope or potential energy to kick off the flow um, to erode offshore. And so this one just trickled out pretty much like this for a few days. Um, the water level dropped by about 10 centimetres um, and then it, it shut off in a period um, about a week later. And then again, that example from Curtis, the, the earlier photo, this had both high waves offshore um, and a really low gradient channel. So that translated to uh, flow without enough energy to keep moving sand offshore. 